You know, there is in the Western, not Texas, Kansas, there is a common rule, common law among farmers that if a farmer buys a new truck, they would hide it as long as possible. They don't want anybody found out that they have a brand new truck or something else. They will keep it in a garage just because they don't want their neighbors get what? Jealous. And also, they don't want to be flashy, you say, and boastful. So they hide it. But what I don't really understand, it's almost like a false modesty. If God has blessed you with the abundance, and bless you with the ability to buy a new truck, why would you hide it in a garage? Unless you used your tithe and offerings, right? Then you would uh, be afraid that your neighbor's gonna find out what you've done. When God bless your socks off, you want to praise God and let the whole wide world know about his blessings upon your life. Don't you? Amen? Amen? That is uh, what happening, what's happening in this uh, third Sunday of Advent in our reading. We say Mary's song. Uh, we call it Magnifica. Now, Mary just got a what? big surprising news from an angel and she is conceived she will bear a child and name will be Jesus and he will save the world now she visited the Elizabeth her cousin right you all know the story right and uh, she was in late age she was uh, pregnant by a miracle of God, and she was what mother of John the Baptist. You still got it, yeah. And so when she walked in to Elizabeth house, and uh, the baby in her womb leaped for joy, and Elizabeth said things about the future, and then in response to. Uh, Elizabeth is uh, welcoming Mary. Mary broke out and praise and this song of praise and hallelujahs, right? And it was a too big of a gift of God for her, not only for her, for the whole wide world. It was a too big of news that she couldn't contain it. She couldn't keep it in her garage. She had to praise God and let the whole wide world to know about this amazing, amazing God's plan is happening. So in a sense, make a short sentence to her entire song, she was saying what? Joy to the world, the Lord is coming, right? So that's why we say what? Merry Christmas. Someone said this morning, happy holidays. I'm not going to pick on you. <laughs> but don't, don't, feel, um, don't feel offended. And, uh, you know, people say happy holidays. And we say, we respond to them, happy holidays. And when we say happy holidays, it's because we began happy holidays because that we want to be inclusive. Those who do not um, uh, worship the Lord God, and yet they celebrate Christmas. They buy gifts and family gather together. So we say happy holidays. But for us, for Christians, it's a, a very merry Christmas. Amen. Amen? The merry and the happiness is different. 
Happiness is uh, uh, depend on the circumstances. If you win the jackpot or lottery, you are happy, and your relatives comes and take them all away, then you are unhappy, right? But the joy, merry, is joyful. Some people get confused with the fun and joy. Fun has nothing to do with the joy, inner joy. Fun is outward. Something happens, you have fun. You go shop till you drop and you have fun. And then when you receive the gift you don't like, you go back and not return, you have fun, right? And joy is whether you receive a perfect gift for this Christmas or not, whether you are going through difficult times or not, whether uh, your relationship is going sour or not, that you will have this joy in your heart. Amen? Because the Lord has come. Amen? That's why we say Merry Christmas. And people look at you, what are you so merry about? Happy holidays. Hello, it's a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Got it? Got it. So what are you so merry about, joyful about? And the Mary's song gives us at least three reasons that we've got to be so very merry during this season when we remember what God has done for us, what God is still doing for us, and God will do in our future. Amen? Amen. So I've come up with the three M's. It's in your sentences. So, you know, the Mary's Magnifica starts with verse 46. Open your Bible, Luke 40, I look chapter 1. I, Luke 10. I try to be pretty, but it doesn't work. <laughs> I better take it. So, Luke chapter 1, and uh, Mary's uh, Magnificent, Mary's song begins with 46, verse 46. And then our UCC lectionary calendar gave us uh, 47 to 56. 56 says Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months. What is that has to do with any, you know? But anyway, they, give the, they started with 47. That means that we've got to focus on what? Joy, rejoices. You see, 46 starts with what? My soul magnified, my soul glorified in the Lord, right? And then uh, 47, she says what? My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Why? Why? Three M's. Uh, and uh, any, anybody, and you are very smart. I, I think you can pick the three M's out of, uh, uh, yeah, out of, out of uh, what? Uh, Verse 48, 40, uh, 49, and verse 50. That's the three answers there. So 48 says what? God has been what? Mindful, Mindful of us. And then 49 says, mighty one has uh, done great things. So you insert mighty things. All right? That's how I got three M's, right? My great mighty things. You can say that, right? And then... Uh, God is God, God, his uh, mercy, what extends mercy. God is merciful to us. His mercy extends to those who fear him, right? So those are three M's that we're going to look into it. And it reminds us why we've got to be very merry during, especially during this season, because Christ has come and because we know these, at least we can know for sure, at least with these, these three M's we can stand on, we can live by. Amen? Amen. So first M is what? Uh, my soul magnifies and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, because God has been mindful of me. So all generations gonna call me what? Blessed, right? Now, think about this for a second. How did she know that she, we are going to call her blessed woman? This is the beginning of her journey, right? She just received eye-opening, I mean, it's a outrageous news from the angel and how could this be? I'm a virgin, and uh, and it says what? Nothing is impossible with God. And then she says what? Let it be. Let it be unto me what you've said. So by faith, she knows, right? I mean, 
Can you imagine to break the news? Well, hello, you know, some scholars uh, uh, mentioned that. We, we well, kind of think she was uh, about 15 years old, but in some cases, the scholars that study, they, they said she is uh, even younger than that. So your teenage daughter come to you. Hello, mama. I am pregnant. I, I did not know any man, but it, I am conceived a child by the Holy Spirit. What would you do? How? Can you imagine that she had to break that news? And yet she is uh, rejoicing and she's calling herself blessed woman. Prophecy over her life by faith. Blessed people. Doesn't mean that your life will be handed on a silver platter. Look at Mary's life. She went through treacherous, difficult times, right? And she had to make a journey from Beth, I mean the Nazareth to Bethlehem on foot. And our pictures show that Mary had a, a sit on a donkey when she went to the Bethlehem. That's uh, not really. I mean, Mary and Joseph was poor. Poor cannot afford the Cadillac, you know. They had to walk by foot 80 miles. And she didn't have a place to uh, give birth and lay her son anywhere but in a manger, difficulties. When we experience difficulties, we think we are not blessed. Hey, Mary is the blessed woman. She went through these difficulties. And she even had to watch her son nailed on a cross. How difficult can you get? But she never fors fors forsake her faith in God because she knew God's plan for her life is uh, much better than her own little plan for her life. We all memorize that Bible passage, right? Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13, God says what? I have planned for you. Not to harm you, but what? To prosper you. So God is mindful of each one of you. And God's been thinking of you. God has a plan for each one of you. And God is leading you to fulfill that plan. Sometimes we get off. Sometimes we don't listen. Sometimes we get into real hot water that we think God abandoned us. No. And you keep on, in spite of your difficult situation, you keep on saying blessing onto your life. Then everything will work out for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. You know, prophesy over your children. Never ever say to your children, you meant you are amount to be nothing. What do you say? How do you say? Huh? Praise your children and bless their life. You are going to be blessed man and woman. You are going to be great. You are going to make a difference in this world. And you, you tell yourself to prophesy over your life even when you are going through a hard time. God's gonna, yes, God's going to help you. God's going to make everything for good. Amen? Amen. There is a story about a Christmas story. This is a nice, nice story. And uh, when a congregation, in a congregation, a pastor announced that uh, there is a family who uh, have to go through uh, this uh, Christmas um, the needy family and the 
what do you call it, bleak Christmas. And so a young father and his uh, son decided to uh, cut a, a fresh Christmas tree and deliver to uh, them. But on the way to cut a uh, Christmas tree, the, they encountered rock slide and a boulder uh, hit their truck and uh, boy and the truck got smashed and a boy got hurt and so they uh, waved uh, passing by cars to, for help. And none of them stopped. About, about 200 cars after one car stopped and a couple uh, stepped out of the uh, car and uh, helped them and uh, helped them to uh, uh, go to the hospital and et cetera. And, and then after that, on Christmas Eve, uh, the pastor asked this same uh, father and a boy to uh, help to deliver this Christmas gift uh, for that Chris, uh, needy family. They were going to bring the Christmas tree, and they failed to do. And so they said, oh, yeah, our troops fixed, and our boy got you know, healed, and so we'll gladly do it. When they get there, ring the bell, guess who? The same couple, the same couple who helped them. You see, life doesn't pan out to be that neatly, but that is the point. Our God has plan to prosper us. So when you are going through difficult time, remember, God is what? Mindful of you. Mindful of you, thinking of you 24 7. God's working behind the scene. When you know that, when you trust that, how can you not have joy in your heart? Amen? The everlasting joy. Amen? And then, second is what? God has done mighty, mighty one has done mighty things. For me and for you, right? Did she say that? So, so what mighty things God has done? Hmm? God saw our state of our life. And he was mindful of our future. So what did God do. Mighty one did a mighty thing to send what? The Savior. The Savior for each one of us, right? Isaiah, open Isaiah 35. Isaiah talks about mighty thing much better, explains this uh, much better than the Mary's song. This is where she uh, uh, the proclaimed because of her faith, she knows that God has done already mighty things and for her life. And we know, we know it too. For our lives, our God has done mighty things. And Isaiah 35, it says what? It, it's, it's about, a chapter, whole chapter is about what? The life of a redeemed one. That means the life of you, right? The ones who accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it goes on and on. And what did God has done? God put the, what, super highway in the desert, right in the middle of the desert. We were uh, dead to sin. We were living in a pit. And God put the super highway so that we can get on it. We can follow, get on it. And this is a redemptive life that we received. The mighty one has done mighty great things, right? Redemption in all times. And a guy um, be on debt forever, and he can't pay back his debt. What does he do? He sells himself uh, to a creditor, creditor um, as a slave so that he worked as a slave until he pay off his debt. And then if they have, this guy had uh, rich re relatives, then they go and pay all his debt and buy him back, right? That's the picture of our Jesus. That's what our Lord has done. And God saw our stage, that we are dead to sin. 
We are slaves to Satan, and God sent sacrifice his son to redeem us, bring us, purchase us from that debt, and gave us brand new life. Amen? And that is the greatest gift that any human beings can receive. And that gifts keep on giving. Did you know that? You know, it's like a, God has spent entire his wealth, sacrifice, entire wealth, entire thing, the precious thing, sacrifice just to have us in his family. It's like you had a, a savings and you had everything and you sold everything and you buy or build a brand new house. And then on the, um, what kind of day, uh, candy day, um, kids come knock on your door, Halloween. Uh, Halloween. Halloween day, kids ring the bell and you didn't give them candy, then what they do? Throw eggs on your door, right? Are you going to let that egg sit on your door forever? Or you go wash them? You go wash them, right? And I give you uh, the, the kids like uh, example so that you get it. <laughs> and, and, and what if a drunk driver just smash into your living room? Are you going to fix it or just leave it as uh, it is? Well, that's my fortune. You are going to fix it. What about tornado just whip off your house? Nothing left. What are you going to do? Rebuild. Because what? You have what? 100% insurance, right? Our God has insurance on us. Did you know that? Who is that? Who would that be? Jesus, Jesus built us, cleansed us, brand new people, so we've got to live according to his, uh, worthy of his sacrifice, but do we do? So what did Jesus do? Send what? Insurance policy on you. Send what? The Holy Spirit be with you. So when you make a mistake, Holy Spirit, Convict you, guide you, lead you, so that you can be revealed and renewed, you see? And that's why I never understood when Jesus said, John 14, 12, you know, I tell you, truly, truly, I tell you, that you are going to do greater things that I have done. Hello, Jesus, I am human, you are divine, how can it be? And he says, because I'm going to my father. What is that? And then verse about 16, he says, when I go, my father, I will what? Ask my father to send you what? Comforter, another comforter, that he will be with you. That is what? The Holy Spirit. So when he was here in physically, he can make us uh, uh, miracles. If he's here, right here, physically, right? But uh, the congregation down in Kaului, they will hear it later. They wouldn't get any benefit of it, right? But now, Jesus come as a Holy Spirit in us, and if I am empowered, you are empowered, we are all together empowered, we can do greater things. Amen? Amen? And, and, and if the whole wide world is empowered, whole wide world is one accord, one purpose, one, one design, one desire, hello, we are going to make a difference. Praise the Lord. Lord. So I believe God wants to use you. You know, God thinks of you. I want you to memorize this. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. If you can find the Zechariah, praise God. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 8, God says to, 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 to the Israelites, if anyone touches you, what? They are touching what? The apple of my eye. 
Hallelujah. God thinks of you that precious, that important, that valuable. They touch my eye of my apple, apple of my eye. So God's going to use you. God's going to bless you. Greater things yet to come. You got to expect the greater things yet to come in your life, in, in, in the church's life, in the whole wide world. Why? Why do I know this? By faith. What God has done, we already know. God is mindful of us, and God has the mighty things, and the mighty things, and he had the insurance policy on us, so he is going to do another mighty things because we have a Holy Spirit in us. When we get together and join our hearts together, and we can do, we can make some difference in our community. How can we not have a joy, very merry Christmas? Amen. 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 And then third, lastly, what? Merciful. We know God is merciful to us, right? And uh, the uh, verse 50 says, uh, His mercy extends to who? To those who fear Him and generation after generation. Now, you all know the definition of mercy. Mercy is uh, you didn't get punishment that you deserve. Right? And grace is uh, on top of that, you get something second chance. That's grace, right? Mercy is uh, empty, emphasized with uh, the people's needs and emphasized with understanding. So, mercy, if you are merc merciful, then God will be, God's mercy will extend because it says, His mercy extends to those what? who Fear him. What is fearing him? Huh? Respect him. Honor him. Do follow what he commands of us to do, right? When we respect and honor him, we will keep his commandments. What is the whole commandments? It's sum up in two sentences, right? Love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. And that way, we can do what? Carry out the Great Commission, go make disciples of all nations. You see? And when we do that, God's mercy will extend to what? Generation after generation. Not only to your life, uh, your son's and daughter's life and your grandkids' life, God's mercy will extend. Don't you want that to happen to your family? Yes, yes. So we've got to, we've got to fear God. We've got to honor God. We've got to respect God's law. We've got to do what God asks us to do. After all, he's mindful of us. He has a good plan for us. And he's done mighty things. Why can we not honor him? Why can we not fear him? Why can we not respect him, right? But so... Christianity is all about forgiveness, somebody says. We do forgive others. And yet, we reserve our right to rehatch. Did you know that? And sometimes we don't want to forgive because uh, you don't know how much I've hurt. We don't want to let go of our right to revenge. And yet, God says what? Avenge is my God is a just God. If we trust God, we will. When we do that, we can be good witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. This is the season that you've got to let go of all bitterness, resentment, all hurt in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. There is a story it happened 1958 in uh, university of pennsylvania and a uh, exchange student from korea went out to mail his letter to his family back in korea on the way back to return to uh, dorm he encountered 11 
leather jacketed teenage boys. They had the pipes and baseball bats and etc. They beat him to death. They broke every bone in his body and they throw him in a girl. When the DA found him, he was dead in the gutter. And Philadelphia was crying out, outrageous, and crying out for justice. So DA requested and uh, granted his request to try the, to, to the court these teenage boys be tried in, as an adult so that they can be punished according to the crime they have uh, committed even to death penalty. Shortly after that decision was made, they, DA, received petition letter, not by those 11 teenage boys, but by the victim's parents. And I tried to quote it exactly how they wrote it. And the petition says this, we've decided to petition that the most generous treatment the laws of your government is given to those teenage boys who committed this crime. In order to support our sincerity, enclosed our money, hope that you would start a fund to educate religious, vocational, and social order so to give them to these boys when they were released so that they can be productive member of society. And we were there to express our hope in a spirit that what the gospel of Jesus taught us. Jesus who died for us, unconditional forgiveness. I couldn't have a dry eye when I read that. That is the forgiveness exactly copy the forgiveness that our Lord Jesus asked us to do. That's how it's done. It's uh, much easier said than done, much easier than somebody else happened, something happened to somebody else. But when it happens to us, even to that extent, I bet you, God's mercy extends to their family generation after generation that God has promised. We say, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is the season when we let go unconditional forgiveness. The offender didn't, don't have to ask us to forgive, right? That's unconditional forgiveness. When we do that, we'll have what? Joy like a fountain. We are going to have joy of the season. And we are going to have a very Merry Christmas. Amen? Amen. That's the message of this third Sunday of Advent. As weak you, as you are, as uh, troubled as you are, as a hard time you are going through, whatever you are going through, you are going to say what? Merry Christmas. And people say, what are you so merry about? 
you have uh, the answer. The Lord has come because he has come. We know at least three things. What was that? We can trust he's mindful of us and he mighty things merciful to us. Amen? And we are doing those three things at least. God's going to what? Bless our socks off. Amen? Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, we give you thanks that you have sent your son joy to the world. The Lord has come. Yes, Lord. You saw our future, our situation, present difficulties to live life. Yes, Lord God. You have sent your son to redeem us, give us abundant life here on earth and eternal life in heaven. Oh, Lord God, and remind us of what you are capable of, what you've done, what you have promised doing to us through Mary's song. Yes, Lord God, help us to be filled with joy in our hearts in spite of hardship, in spite of everything going on around us. In Jesus' name.